Okay, so 9th of June, DR position. Question says, calculate the amplitude, deviation, and compass error. We have a DR position. Tells us the sun rose 090. Chronometer showed 080310. Chronometer error was 2 minutes 53 seconds slow. And the variation was 28 west. So what we have to do, we need to start by finding what the UT of sunrise was. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. In the question there, it tells us the chronometer showed, well, showed 8.03.10 seconds. The error was 2 minutes 53 seconds slow. That will give us a UT, but we wouldn't know if that was 2000 or 0800. However, one thing we can do is say that 28 degrees and 50 minutes west in longitude and time would only be less than two hours. Okay, just close to two hours. 30 degrees would be exactly two hours. With that in mind, because it's sunrise, sunrise is in the morning, and it's a small longitude of only two hours difference from UT, that would have put it at about six o'clock in the morning, roughly, sunrise, give or take a few minutes, whichever we were doing it, which would fit. If we applied the two hours to get back to local time from the chronometer that we'd have of eight minutes, six, or something like that, eight hours and six minutes, then that would have to put it in the evening so it wouldn't work. The other way of doing it, which is more mathematically proven, if you like, is to say, okay, then on the 9th of June, sunrise at 10 south would have been 6.13. Now, you could interpolate it and say, well, okay, I want 8.04. So that would be between 0.556 and 0.613. But, you know, we're only trying to prove the approximate time to check the chronometer as a way to 2000. So if you've just done it based on 6.13, then 28 degrees 50 west is going to be one hour and 55 minutes 20. Add that to 613 is going to be about 8 or what, 808, something like that. So it's going to tie in very similarly to what the chronometer was in that question. Okay, so that's how we would prove the UT time to be something close to that. Now, In the question, it's given us there the DR position. Okay, so we know where we were. So what we're going to do is say, right, okay, my DR position was eight degrees four minutes south and zero to eight degrees fifty minutes west. So it's a good idea to try and sort of visualize that by writing it down a bit more, make you a bit more aware of the situation. Now, for an amplitude, they're very simple. We only need a time to get the declination and a latitude. We've got the latitude, so we only need the declination. So the chronometer showed 08, 03, 10. We know it's AM because we either done Proving the numbers with the interpolation, or because it had a small LIT of only two hours from that, and it was sunrise. The error was two hours, uh, two minutes and 53 seconds slow. So we're going to add that to get 08, 5, 4, 6, 13. Or three. Eight, or six, or three. So that was the chronometer time. Oh eight, oh six, or three. Now because the chronometer was oh eight three ten and it was slow, we added it to get the UT time. Okay. What we need to do now is say okay. What was my declination for that time. So we go into the almanac, say so right, 0800 declination was 2255.8. So the declination, 22 degrees, 55.8 minutes. Decorrection, we need to have a look 
and see what that was. So was it increasing or decreasing and what was the value? So if we look there, down at the bottom, the D correction value was 0 0.2. It's the 9th of June, it's before the solstice, so it's going to be increasing, but we'll just confirm it. 54.8 going to 55. Yep, the numbers are going up, so we're going to add it. So my D correction was 0 0.2, and it was increasing. Now what I have to do is, in the almanac, I turn to the back of it. I should have said, by the way, guys, the almanac I'm using for this example is just the one from IAMI for the SQA exams. And a D correction for six minutes of 0 0.2 is 0, 0.0. So that gives me a declination of 22 degrees, 55.8 minutes. Sine amp equals sine dec divided by cos lat. So that's going to be sine dec was sine 22 degrees, 55.8 divided by cos 0, 08 degrees, 0, 04 minutes. That was north, that was south. It makes no difference apart from when you write it down at the end there. So the sine of 22 degrees, 55.8 minutes, divided by cos 8 degrees, 4 minutes. So the sign up, 0.393499725. So the amplitude is 23.2. We've got to name it north, south, and east and west. Remember with amplitudes, east or west comes first. It's rising. So we're going to call it east. If it was setting, it would be west. And then we're going to call it north or south based on the declination, which was north. So it's going to be east north. So it's going to be 90 minus that, which means the amplitude of the bearing of the body is 0 066.8 degrees true. Remember, we go from east to west, so 90 or 270 to the north, we're going to be minus 6 from east to the south, we would have been adding it. So, then what we do, compass error. True was 0, 066.8 degrees, variation was 28 degrees west, so that's going to give us a magnetic of 0, 094.8 degrees. Deviation, the compass was 0, 090 degrees, so that means we've got 4.8 degrees east deviation so the total compass error was 23.2 and it's west remember true to compass east subtract west you would add error west comes best however you want to remember it going from true to compass so total difference is 23.2 and if you apply the compass error to your true you shouldn't get any compass straight away is a nice little check there Couple of points, remember, amplitudes are done when the sun is a semi-diameter above the horizon. What that means is there's your sun, there's your horizon. That distance there is the same as that distance there. That's to allow for refraction so that it's actually on the horizon at the time that you take it. Semi-diameter can be found in the almanac if you ever needed it. The only time you really use it to actually measure accurately in high latitudes, because in high latitudes, the altitude change is very uh, minimal while the bearing change comparatively is quite rapid. Now obviously in real life the bearing change is the same whether at the pole or the equator it changes by 15 degrees an hour. However, in high latitudes the sun doesn't rise and set as vertically. Okay? In the tropics near the equator it rises quite steeply so you get quite a lot of altitude change comp for the amount of bearing change you get. Whereas in very high latitudes, if you're at the top of Norway in permanent daylight and things, the altitude is going to change at a lower rate compared to the bearing than it does in the tropics. 